Thank you. Uh, as Bean said, um, I am 16 years old and I'm in high school and um, I'm a junior in high school. And kind of the way I'm going to lay out this talk is I'm going to start with kind of my personal story and I'm going to move on to use cases and then finish up with some key points. So um, here goes my personal story. When I was, let's see, 14 years old, uh, I got my first drone and it was a Phantom 1. So um, a DJI Phantom 1. And back then, they cost $700. So um, for some of you, that's probably a drop in the bucket. But for me, that's the whole bucket. Um, <laughs> and so um, and because of that, I actually did a lot of research because I wanted to protect my investment and make sure back then they were a lot more complicated, not as easy to use. And the information was actually harder to find. So I really wanted to protect my investment and actually get a return on the investment as well. Uh, through renting it out and um, doing commercial aerial videography and photography. So, um, yeah, so I went through that. And because I spent three or four months, you know, an hour or two a day trying to learn and make sure uh, I knew what I was doing, um, I actually learned quite a bit. And because the information was hard to find, other people didn't want to spend that same time. So um, I started an Instagram account and decided to share my knowledge as well as post other people's photos and videos on there, aerial photos and videos. And eventually it grew to, after I think five or six months, it grew to about 2,200 followers. And from there, I started trying to think of how I could, you know, no one wants to, no brand wants to send a product to someone to post on Instagram or, you know, sponsor an Instagram account. Like, that's not cool or whatever. So, they, so I decided to start a YouTube channel and, um, and just post YouTube videos. And then I promoted through uh, the Instagram. Um, one thing that a lot of people, uh, kind of a misconception is that once you start on YouTube and you put ads on your videos, you're going to be a millionaire or whatever. But <laughs> um, the, the truth of it is, is that YouTube has, um, their average CPM is $2. And CPM means um, payment per thousand views, thousand ad views. Now I don't see ads on every single video and neither do you. So that's, so if you get 3,000 views, you may get 1,000 ad impressions, which will add up to $2 for you. So you can imagine how quickly it doesn't make much money. <laughs> um, and the, the amount of effort put in doesn't exactly correlate to the um, AdSense revenue. So um, just so you know, just a little aside, uh, most of the YouTube creators, even the big ones, they also do brand deals and sponsorships to make up because that's the only way that you can make a full-time living on YouTube. But aside from that, um, I began promoting these YouTube videos through uh, Reddit, Facebook, um, Instagram, as I said before. But um, when I was promoting these on Facebook, I also engaged in Facebook groups. For those of you who don't know, Facebook groups are, if you're a member on Facebook, you can join these Facebook groups. And then you can get that. Um, and then once you join these Facebook groups, you can actually interact with other people and um, and share their posts as well as comment on their posts and like them and comment and let them know, you know, answers to their questions. But the biggest limitation to Facebook, and I'll share more on this later, is SEO. Their Facebook posts don't go on Google. So um, whereas if you search, so if you search on Google, you know, how to fix a broken cooler or something, you're not going to see anything from Facebook groups. You're going to see stuff from forums or other sources or blogs or stuff. So that's one of the, if not the biggest limitation of Facebook. So this kind of plays into the um, whole idea of, um, you know, kind of my first realization is that when you spend time to get liked and followed and subscribed to and all that stuff, you're really making money for Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. <laughs> They're not really giving you much of that money. So really you're helping them out more. And um, so yeah, so from there on YouTube, I started... Um, I found a designer, a 3D um, model designer, and I asked him, and I kind of commissioned him to make um, a piece for the Phantom. So this is kind of difficult to explain, but essentially, um, even with the old Phantoms going all the way back, uh, on the bottom here, there's two screws. So what you can do is you can get, these normally have props on them, and that's how it flies. But what you can do is you can get a prop guard, which will protect this prop, so you can essentially run it into wooden fences or you know, tons of objects and it won't fall down because the piece is hitting the wall instead of the prop. So, but the issue with these is that in order to get them 
um, in order to use them, you had to take out two screws and these long hex screws on each arm. So that took 10 minutes, and you have to do it in the field, and most cases didn't hold the prop guards with them. So you'd have to do that in the field, and that's 10 minutes of people staring at you, not knowing what you're doing while you're taking out a bunch of screws. So um, I came up with the idea to actually, um, essentially this piece, this 3D printed piece, you would screw those two screws into one time, and then it would quickly snap on in the future. So um, that went pretty well. Um, I think over a couple of months, it was a few thousand dollars in sales. But the issue with that is, and we ended up getting a couple of 3D printers, but um, as many, many of you probably know, 3D printers aren't exactly at the manufacturing level yet, at least the printer I had. So they're great for prototyping, and you can do a few pieces each day, but when you try and get, and the set came with four, so I had to print four each day, or four per each order, rather. Um, so when you wanted to make a lot of them, then you get into kind of a hole where, you know, the 3D printers break down. So we ended up having a triple digit amount of back orders that took a long time to <laughs> get back. So kind of that, the second lesson is, uh, it's kind of cheesy, but hard goods are hard. So there you go. So when you make it, you package it, you ship it, then you have to support it. And all that work um, is really to a minimal amount, at least in the piece that I was doing. So this next point um, is kind of along, you know, kind of where it evolved from there. So then I started looking to where um, I could do more online engagements to make money, but not on social media, but um, on a private platform. So um, there was a site that had been around for a long time called Phantom Pilots. Um, been around for two or three years, started by a guy, a guy with the alias Adam. And he actually, um, he was one of the guys who just started it and then left it alone. You could email asking to buy it. You could email to ask to do sponsor. You could throw money at him. He would just wouldn't reply. So the issue, so I started thinking, well, maybe this would be something that um, he would be interested in selling. So finally, I got an email back with a price. And I called up um, a guy I had, I had met through Facebook called uh, with the name Noah Chinook. Um, for those of you who don't know who he is, he's the founder of Stitcher and the co-founder, or the, well, the founding vice president of StubHub. Uh, Stitcher is the number one Android podcasting app and the number two on iTunes, just behind iTunes podcasts. And they have like 20 million downloads or something. So um, I caught up with him and we talked and he said that he would be interested in investing. He just had to talk to another friend of his. Well, in that time, I had been talking to uh, my father as well as my uncle who um, did entrepreneurial stuff as well. And he said that he would, him and my father said that they would like to put up uh, the funds necessary to purchase a site or to acquire it. So we did that and it also came with uh, a site called Inspire Pilots, which was a different, it was still made by DJI, the company that makes that one. Uh, it was just a different model for more professional use. But so we acquired those two sites and then we, um, and they were already at a relatively, um, they were kind of starting to flatline in terms of growth. And um, so we acquired them and kind of along the realization that once you own your own audience, you can do whatever you want. You know, you can advertise, you can have affiliates, uh, you can get subscribers to media out of that, social media out of that. So if you want to do brand deals, you can do that. And if you want to, you know, send a weekly newsletter, that works too. So that's kind of what came out of that. And here you can see how the network has grown. That March is when we first acquired, and it was at 100,000 monthly unique visitors. And now it's at 280,000 monthly unique visitors as well as 2.5 million page views per month. So uh, those are the four sites. Uh, 3DR and Unique are two other drone manufacturers. And then Inspire and Phantom are under DJI, who, makes, who is the most popular manufacturer. So now I said I would give you use cases. So um, one of the things I wanted to make sure I didn't do is, I mean, I'm sure most of you have seen on um, news websites, you know, uh, Amazon drone delivery and things of that sort. Um, but I want to give you actual use, like actual use cases and things where it's actually coming into play. So here are kind of some examples, starting from the left, agriculture. So you can use them for sheep and cattle herding, as well as um, you can use them for imaging of your crops, which is the most uh, potent use right now. But essentially what this is is for $3,500 from Aerial Media Pros, they have a Agriculture Scout Pro or Ag Scout Pro. And um, what, is, what this will do is you 
map a flight plan, and it'll run that each day in the morning when you tell it to go. It'll autonomously run that, and it'll take images. You can either have regular images, standard images in 4K or um, up to, I think, like 18 megapixels, or you can get a specialized um, agriculture camera, so that'll measure like water levels and um, other things I don't really know about because I'm not a farmer. But, um, <laughs> but uh, so that's the kind of the agriculture side. Now, drone delivery, most of you, or at least I didn't know, that 80% of packages are less than five pounds, which that guy right there can handle five pounds, and it's tiny. And then also, the cost of drone delivery is 7% of the cost of traditional ground delivery services. So that's crazy. And then um, the other use case, which is probably the most um, memorable and what you've probably seen in the news, is, um, is for aerial photography and videography. So for example, this has a uh, integrated gimbal. It's not turned on, so it's not going to be stabilized. But that'll shoot 4K as well as take I think it's either 16 or 18 megapixel photos. So that, that guy will take some serious photos, and that's compared to the traditional cost of $10,000 or more for a regular helicopter, not to mention that this guy can go under bridges and do things that helicopters wouldn't even dream of doing. So that's really interesting. Here we go. So kind of the economic impact of drones are, you know, in 2017, it's projected to be 70,000 jobs and a $14 billion market. Whereas in 2025, it's projected to be 104,000 jobs with the $82 billion market. So you can just see how it's expected to grow, and uh, I think that's going to help a lot with the uh, job def deficit. And kind of here's the summary, the key points. Um, become an expert in something that interests you. If you, if you like something and you want to know about it, you can take the time to research it, and you can eventually become an expert or know a lot about it. Um, build an audience of people who don't want to spend the time um, anybody could have spent an hour a day learning what I learned, and they would have probably built the same audience and learned the same stuff. It's just taking the time. And then choose a platform that you can monetize. Um, I quickly realized that you can move um, onto a private forum. This doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be a forum. It could be a blog. It could be a news site. Uh, it doesn't, and you don't actually have to buy a forum. You can just start one, except in our case, it made sense to acquire this forum. So um, that's kind of the summary. And then the one main point that kind of encompasses it all and doesn't um, specifically apply to drones, it kind of applies to everything, is follow your passion. So if you follow what you love to do, you're going to become an expert and you're going to spend the time. So it doesn't matter what you're doing. I mean, I'm 16 and I'm not even close to the smartest person in this room, much less the people who stood on the stage. So uh, if you take your time and you love what you're doing, then you'll learn about it and you will become an expert. Thank you. Thank you.